G'day everyone, welcome to the part 3 of the How To Lasted Tutorial. Of course, my name's Andrew DFT, and let's finish this thing off. So of course, when we left off in part 2, we had our rifle looking somewhat like this. A lot of detail has already been carved in, and we did the scoring and the heat treatment, so that way it all comes to life. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this section of the template, and we'll cut it out so that it's freestanding like this. Then grab the scissors or a craft blade, and we're actually going to cut this into two segments, so we have the top and the bottom. Then what you can do is go and carve, sorry, no, trace <laughs> the template onto a piece of foam. So we have two of them, both a left and a right. So you'll need to flip the template so that we can, of course, account for that. Then what we'll do is we'll grab the template and we'll cut this internal section out. This internal section will give us some detailing that we'll add later on. But for now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll glue these two together. Of course, if it doesn't fit 100%, then you can quickly give it a trim to make sure it does. Then you can grab your craft blade and get to work and scoring the lines needed here on the design. Making sure you are following the guidelines quite clearly as you don't want to off cut and make a mistake. Then what you'll do is you'll grab the template, the second part of the hole that we cut off originally and create, create, <laughs> create one extra piece on a singular foam sheet. We don't need two for this stage, we're going to do it as one thickness. Well actually we're going to do it even smaller than one thickness. You want to add a bevel line as close as you can to the textured side of the foam and then simply cut it right off. Of course we don't want to have that textured side showing, so at least this way we have two nice even sides of the foam that are just, well, the foam rather than any kind of texture. Then simply apply some hot glue and glue it into position like that right in the middle of the two seam lines, so that way it sits nice and center. Then give it a nice little heat over once it's all cooled down, and we'll leave it there, because what we're gonna do is we can actually go ahead and glue it into position, applying hot glue to both sections, the left and the right of this piece, so that way it slots in there relatively nicely. And of course, you will need a trigger, so you can draw this up however you wish, however design you want for a specific trigger. I'm just gonna go with a very simple shark tooth styled trigger, by applying the exact same technique we just did for that little extra piece of detail. Simply by putting the template onto one piece of foam, cutting that foam so that we don't have the textured side, and then applying hot glue and gluing it straight into position. Nothing too difficult and all too easy. Moving on to a few little details that go on the top of this gun. We want to add these before we get onto the chain mechanics, because this way it will just make the design look a bit more fleshed out and complete. So what we've done is we've grabbed the template and we've cut, uh, transferred it onto two spaces of foam, both a left and a right, and then we'll slowly start to transfer the template across. We've got these three individual segments we need to add to this design, so all we're doing is breaking the template apart and making sure we transfer those lines on as needed. So that way you should have these three individual segments quite clearly marked out. You can then go trace on those lines well, segmenting them even further, and then simply hot glue those two pieces together, making sure that you do get it sitting relatively flush and looking quite nice. Then take the heat gun to it, make that detail really rise and look decent, like it does there. Decent. And then you can simply just glue it into position. Looking on screen for where the actual direction goes and how you actually place it is key, so make sure you focus on that, or you can look at the picture we will reveal in a minute. But first, what we've got to do is add another piece of detail to this section. This is the second part of three, and you're pretty much throwing the exact same uh, technique and style that we just did for many of these individual parts so far. Simply breaking apart the template, applying the detail needed onto the foam, and because this is going to be a lot thinner, we'll uh, bevel the foam about halfway through and simply cut it in half, so that way we have these two segments. You can discard the one with the texture side, we don't need that anymore, and that way we have a nice thinner piece, which you can then of course score and then apply heat to really flush out the detail like that. Lovely piece of detail, I must say. <laughs> and then of course, chuck some hot glue onto it and put it into position. Like I said, using this as a uh, reference point so where you know how to glue it. So that way it does sit relatively in position, but it should sit relatively nice. So even if you don't place it exactly where it should go, it will still look the same. It's not really an issue. On to the third and final part of detail. I know, right? Annoying pieces. <laughs> Wait till you see what's coming. All right, so what we'll do first is we'll quickly get the template, make the uh, foam a bit thinner. So we'll put that depth line in about halfway through cut that off, 
and then we'll start to break apart this template. To do this, what you can see, I'm transferring these kind of horizontal lines across. So using a straight edge, you can uh, bring those across, so that way we know exactly where these marks should go. Now what you can then do is actually grab a craft knife and simply cut them along those lines. So that way you have these two segments needed. Then go back to the template and cut out the internal section of it, and then transfer that onto some foam. You can then bevel that piece of foam as well, so that way it reduces the thickness, and we have both uh, thinner pieces to work with this uh, specific piece of detail. But now what we're all gonna do is just simply apply some hot glue and we're gonna stick it on, pretty much creating a bridge between these two pieces of detail. It's very simple, but it does add a neat little 3D design, especially when you paint it up and give it a bit of weathering. So we'll leave it like that and we'll just go ahead and glue it onto the main body of the gun. This piece should actually sit towards the more front um, of the uh, rifle. So ahead of all the designs we've just done. Of course, using this image on screen as reference for where to place them. All right, so the chain section, the very iconic piece of the Lancer that, well, tells you it's a Gears of War gun. Well, prepare yourself for a lot of mundane cutting because we're gonna get to that very shortly. But first of all, we'll get the main track out of the way. So what we're doing is we're just cutting the template apart and transferring them onto the foam, making sure that we do two, a left and a right for both sides. So that way we get, uh, well, the main chunk of this out of the way. Now what we're doing is giving it a bit of detail, so we're breaking apart this section of the template by cutting out the rings of circles and transferring them on to where they should be sitting. Making sure that you are carefully placing it on both sides to make sure you're working simultaneously on the left and the right and breaking it apart as needed. Now what we'll go and do is quickly add these two little circles, so what you can do here, well sorry, elongated circles, Simply cut them out using a craft blade. I wouldn't use scissors for this section. Use a craft blade and then transfer those on to where they need to go. Then, what we're gonna do is just score them. So grab the craft blade, go through the top layer of the foam, making sure it breaks the surface, and then give it a nice little heat up. You aren't gluing the left and the right together. You're just leaving it as it is, as a singular piece of foam. But now you can glue together the main body of this chain. So the left and the right should simply just go together. We're only working with two pieces here as we don't want it to be relatively thick. We will build up some uh, detail and some layers, but for now we'll just keep it as that two stage section. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue on those um, extended pieces that can sit at the front. This will bulk it up a bit more, which is good. But for the most part, we'll leave it as that as we don't really wanna add anything extra. But what we can do is we can work our way into this design. So we'll quickly cut out this strange looking uh, shape here and trace that on to where it needs to go. And then we'll score it, leaving a nice little indented piece in there. You can also score these two horizontal lines that we've just added. It just adds a nice little piece of detail. And of course, when you run the heat gun through it like now, you will see those pieces pop out and just make everything look a bit more well finished. Then once uh, that's all cooled off, we can then go ahead and literally just glue this into position. It should slot in pretty damn well, if not perfect. If it doesn't, then you can just uh, heat it up a bit and kind of morph into position. But for the most part, this was my first attempt at gluing and it went straight in without any issue. Now I'm gonna run you through a nice little addition that I do to finish my EVA foam uh, props to cover up the seams that of course achieved when we glue foam together. So if you wanna follow along, this is just used with very basic and cheap art clay. It doesn't cost you anything and it gives a fantastic result. So all we're doing is adding some water and this clay together to kind of make this putty Play-Doh effect. All you then do is use your fingers with a bit of water to make sure it's well lubricated to push this into the cracks. You can then smooth it down to make a very flat layer and we can work our way over the entire seams of the gun, really making sure that those layers you can't even tell there were ever foam layers. You want to leave it for about six to 10 hours to dry. Once it's absolutely solid and you can feel it with your fingernail, then you can run some sandpaper through it and really sand it down to be absolutely flush to the point where we can really uh, seal it and paint it and you won't know anything. It's a fantastic result for a very cheap price and I highly recommend you go uh, try it, give it a go as you can find this from pretty much every single uh, art supply or stationary surplus store. All right, so now we're up to the very mundane and interesting task of adding all the sharp pointy bits to the chainsaw mechanism. So to do this, we'll grab the lovely little sharp template you can see, the one that looks like the shark fin, and you'll go ahead and transfer a bunch of them onto a sheet of EVA foam. 
maybe work with about seven at a time, cut that out of the main block, and then add a bevel line. You want to do this maybe about three quarters of the way towards the textured side, and then simply and very carefully cut through it, so that way it has a nice even flush slicing side to go with the nice one we currently have. Then go forth and cut all those individual pieces out of the thinned version of that foam. You're going to need to do a bunch of them. I think I totaled uh, maybe about 17 individual pieces. And then of course, once all those 17 have been mundanely uh, cut out of the uh, foam slabs, you can then go ahead and glue them into position, giving them about maybe a quarter inch of spacing between each one, and you should fit about 17, 18 or so on there. But ultimately, for a very small little piece of foam, it really adds up and looks absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, we need a barrel. So to do a barrel, I just used a standard uh, wooden beam, which I then cut with a very cheap little saw, I think it cost me like six bucks, um, to 11 inches. Now that I then put up against the end where the barrel should actually go, and I traced out the actual uh, diameter and the perimeter of the wooden barrel itself, so I knew exactly where it was gonna go. Then using a craft knife, I just cut into the foam very carefully, making sure I didn't hurt myself, and maybe cut it about an inch deep. Now that inch will really help hold the foam, I mean sorry, the wooden barrel, as it's not that heavy and it's extremely light. So then I just filled that with hot glue, pushed the barrel all the way in the inch, and held it there until it was, uh, well, nice and dry and sturdy. It will break off if you try whack it against something. For the most part, it will stick in there relatively nice. And now what we're doing is another little piece of detail that will wrap around the uh, barrel and hold it in there, giving it a lot more strength and durability. Also giving it a nice little bit of design additionally. So works pretty well all together. <laughs> all we're doing is uh, putting it in, making sure it wraps around nicely, cutting it off at the uh, limit where we don't need it to bend any further, and then simply gluing it in, and that should help support and give a nice little piece of detail. Then of course you can do the exact same technique for an extra two pieces that go up here towards the end of the barrel itself. Now to actually give it a bit of design and to specify where this actually ends, all you need to do is draw horizontal lines, three, a center, a left and a right, aiming towards the end of the barrel, about two inches long. Then all you're doing is beveling, pretty much the technique we use on the foam, but you can actually cut through wood pretty easily because the grains just allow the blade to slide through it. Be very careful on where your hands are placed and do control it extremely well as we don't want you harming yourself but it is a very effective way to do as a barrel. If you don't want to do it that way, you can of course give it a, a pipe or something else to go, but otherwise wood is cheap, easy, and well, very simple to uh, manufacture into a barrel. Now of course you're pretty much done. That's the rifle, that's the Lancer that I'll be teaching here in this tutorial. Of course, if you want to take it a step further, well, you're going to need to, you're going to want to seal it and you want to paint it. I won't cover that in this tutorial as there's plenty of uh, resources out there online, but if you do want something created by me, well, you can click the link here or find that in the description box below to take you to a very basic sealing and painting tutorial that I use for all my props um, that you've seen as well as, well, the same one I did to finish off this one. So check that out. And that's it. All that you guys need to know to complete this. Remember, I highly recommend going off and kind of adding your own personal details and extra customizations to really make it your own. So, if you made it this far, I want to say thank you very much for watching and enjoying the videos. And if you did enjoy it, share it with your friends. You can have a bunch of them all displayed on your wall or run around the neighborhoods. Actually, no, don't do that. I didn't, I didn't endorse any running around neighborhoods with guns because that ends to bad bad police matters. But all I'm trying to say is thank you very much. It's very nice and very thoughtful to know that you guys go off and you enjoy these tutorials and you actually build them and you put them on your own display walls. It's not me just standing in my own room talking to no one. And so if you want a awesome as design, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do about bringing it to you in this exact same style. Did somebody say Titanfall? But otherwise, I think that's enough talking for one day. Thank you very much for watching guys, enjoy my other content and I'll catch you guys 